and today we're gonna have another live sew with me hashtag sew with me so we are going to be working on this beauty today she is so similar to the dress that we did last week if you joined me let me get her in focus here and let me look at the to-do list. All right, so we are going to give her a single traditional bustle. We are gonna sew some more buttons on at the center back and move a couple of buttons. And we're gonna add a couple of loops and uh, we're gonna tighten the wrist by moving the buttons one inch over. So that's kind of our plan today on this dress. And then I also wanted to show you guys um, the answer to a really interesting question that I was asked the other day about when we size up or size down a gown, how do we know how many sizes we went up or down? Um, and it was just kind of a really interesting illustration to the answer to that question. I'm going to turn this air off so it's not so annoying. All right. So I'm going to sew the bustle with this ivory upholstery thread here. And thank you for that thumbs up. Thank you for the like. That's so helpful. I'm of course so glad when you guys can join me live but I also love it when you guys join me after the fact so you can leave comments now while we're live and of course I love to answer your questions and kind of visit with you guys um, that way but then also if you come in later and you see it when it's not live anymore I still try to keep on top of those questions and comments so you can always put questions in there so as I was saying, I'm going to start with a single traditional over bustle on this dress and it looks like it needs to hook here and let's see, also here on the skirt. I usually put the loop down a little bit lower so that it's not quite as noticeable, but isn't this dress similar to last week's dress? This is such a popular design right now. Remember we were doing the um, modesty work last week and I did post the after picture to my stories on Instagram last week. So if you were curious about that, you can check that out. So I'm gonna start with a big knot on the back side of all this and I'm going to kind of double knot this knot it again. I'm using some strong upholstery thread and then I always make sure to use really strong bustle hooks. All right so let me grab one of those. I get asked a lot about my bustle hooks. I do make sure that I use the strongest ones I can find and I do link to them on my website, the products page on my website. So this is Prim, P-R-Y-M brand, and they are the number three hooks. The color is called white. Now, when they come in, they're delivered to you, you'll be disappointed because they're still nickel colored. For some reason, this is the color white. They consider um, any type of uh, neutral uh, metal clasp and bridle, they they call it white. Um, I don't think this is neutral at all. I know you guys don't think so either. So uh, the next thing we do is I get one of my helper girls to just get a paper plate out. And we just chalk paint them a couple of coats. It's a nice matte finish so it doesn't show. But it's a good strong hook. So that's how we do those. People ask me all the time, where do I get my ivory uh, bustle hooks? Well, that is where. Let's see here. Let 
I have you guys on a tripod. That's what I normally do. I was thinking about trying to do a little chest mount thing later on in the video if I feel like I need to do it. So that'll be interesting to experiment with different little mounts. That was the clunk that fell, literally fell off. When I say experiment, <laughs> I mean experiment. All right, so I just kind of wrapped that around the hook. I don't know if you saw that or not. I'm going to come back here and come in under one of these loops to the hook like that. Go across. There we go. How are you guys doing this week? Is bridal season slowing down or ramping up? We're getting ready to ramp up. We are getting into leaf peeper season. Fall is huge. So October is the new June, as they say. So, October is our busiest month as far as event dates go. And I'm going to come back this way one more time. And then I'm going to knot this off on the inside. I found that little, um, in the background, you can see the little sewing basket. I found that. At a little antique store the other day. I love green so much. And I'm really into like the botanical cottage core kind of stuff. So I snatched that right up. And I've already used it for taking supplies home just to, you know, work on a dress after hours or something like that. So I knotted that three times, snipped it, and Depending on the dress, sometimes, you know, I use that clear cement to mark the knot, to, to keep that knot closed, but I knotted it enough. I feel pretty good about it. So, I'm going to leave um, the safety pin here just so it's easier to find when we have her fitting. And I'm hosting a retreat this week. I have a BST bestie here. That's super exciting. Come show your hands. Look, here's my hands. Here's her hands. <laughs> She's here for like a in-person retreat. Don't forget, I am having that virtual retreat um, this fall. It's going to be the week after United States Thanksgiving. So it's the last week of November going into the first week of December. So, um, that's a small group, and um, what I'm doing is, um, because it is, you know, it's a bigger commitment, it's a whole week, and I'm going to be filming practically day and night. It's a mixture of, like, live streams and Zoom Q&As and uh, downloadables and, you know, all sorts of things, e-coursey kind of things. Um it's going to be all different hours because we have a worldwide audience. So um, I'll be doing Zoom Q&As at times that will suit my people um, no matter where they are. So it's a, it's a capped attendance deal, but it's also going to be small groups within that. So don't forget about that. You can go to my website and sign up to be receiving information about that. And we'll see if you can get in. I'm going to offer it to people um, in the order in which they registered for information. And you're not going to accidentally sign up for it. You'll know. I'll let you know when you're, like, legit signing up for it. So, you can do that. BridalSewingTechniques.com All right. So, there is my bustle loop. There you go. But... This young lady is here just to um, get the information she needs to start her own business. That is super exciting. And she's here in person. All right, so our to-do list, for those of you who weren't here in the beginning, is uh, single traditional. We just did that. Uh, we're going to sew the buttons at the center back. There's a little problem there. 
we're going to add two loops. I don't know what that means. Oh, you know what? I betcha, 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 betcha. This stretch is open a little bit too much. And they want, you know, the, how you do the hooks and loops like that. It's probably something like that. Either that or I might be adding two loops here to kind of pull these over. I'm going to think on that. I know the, the mom requested that. That might be what that is. To add to kind of like stiff loops. It would be kind of like a kind of like a bustle loop. Um, that's gonna pull the button over, but it won't be the stretchy elastic. I know they were having a problem with this kind of looking like it was flared open. So let me look at your comments. Don't forget if you have questions, leave me a question. All right. Hello, I love your tutorials. I'm glad I caught you live today. I'm glad that you caught me live too, Maria. And you're my first, my first commenter today. Welcome. Ramping up here in Florida. Oh, that's right. You guys, um, you guys are warmer, so your kind of fallish idea happens later. What is fall even like in Florida? Do you even notice it? <laughs> I think of it as just like hot and humid, and sunny, and you know, we get away year round. All right. Hello from New Jersey. Slowing down in Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. It's going to be getting cool soon. Let's see. First year of bridal sewing of summer was intense, but I'm looking looking the books for fall. All right. California, Brittany. Nice. Uh, should we be hearing something about the retreat if we've submitted our email? I haven't heard anything back. Okay. Tammy, um, can you DM me on Instagram after this live stream with the email that you submitted the request for the information, retreat information, uh, put that email in there and I can look and see if you are in, okay, what I did, I think I let like 50 or so people through the first wave because I knew they couldn't all attend, right? I kind of uh, grouped them separate and I sent them information right away. But some of them, you know, went to spam or whatever. So I'll see if you're in that group. The other ones who have registered for information for the retreat, um, but were after the first 50 that put in, and the group is going to be much smaller than 50. That was just kind of my starting point for communicating. If it was after that first 50, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like keeping all of your um, email addresses together so that when the first group of people can opt in or out, once I find out what my cap number is, I'm going to manually go through you guys and offer you an invitation. That was the only way I could think about it, think about doing it to where I didn't want to like open it up and it like somebody couldn't get in because they were a different time zone, like they were asleep or um Maybe it just fills up really fast and it was way more people than I could um, handle in a small group. You know, it was just like a lot of different things like that that I thought about where I was like, mm, I think I need to manually add anybody after this. So I hope that makes sense, Tammy, what I'm explaining. Um, but yeah, so it is normal for some people to have not heard from me yet because I haven't closed out. Um, I haven't offered the enrollment and, and closed it yet to close that first wave of people yet. So all right, let's see. Ooh, good question. Hickey94, do people you know slash family ever ask you for free work? How do you respond to that? This is what is so awesome about being in a niche. I just say, oh, I only do bridal. <laughs> and most people that I know, um, they're not asking me for, for, for free bridal work. And then if they do, I have a set kind of like policy of um, discounts that I give people and I just tell them, okay, like this category of people that I know personally, they get 20% off. This category gets 10% off. This category gets 5% off. And it's kind of like a rule. So it's whatever category they fall in, that's the discount they get. And I mean, seriously, like if they come to me and they want me to like, will you do my alterations for free? Um, that's rude, <laughs> first of 
first off, that's really rude. Okay, second off, if I'm like, no, I don't, but like I can give you like 5% off or I can give you a free bustle or something just because you are like in sort category here. Um, if they kind of get huffy and stomp off, okay, they're either going to get a, a like a hobby sewer that like, you know, may or may not know how to sew and they're taking a risk there. Um, or they're going to go somewhere else and pay somebody else. So like either way, my feelings aren't hurt. And um, hopefully they just like my sewing and they want me to sew their dress because they like my sewing, not because they, um, not because they want to take advantage of me and because I'm the cheapest person. Right. So that's how I feel about that. And let me see if there's any other questions. Why is this going away? Okay, all right. Indonesia, wow. Okay, Ontario, uh, happily buried in fall bridal wear sewing. All right, so there is a lot of fall going on. Okay, so let's, um, let's sew these buttons on. And this was just sewn really strong and sloppy last time. Uh, let me explain where we're at on this dress. This dress was actually the live stream two weeks ago. It looks like the one from last week. We just keep getting the same looking dress. <laughs> but anyways, um, I just realized that this is the very one from last week. And um, do you guys remember me saying, would you sew this on? because we didn't know if it fit her or not. This is the one that we literally like cut it in two. You can see all these are capped off in here. Um, and so what I did was I didn't close this off super neatly. I did it plenty strong, but not super neat because I didn't know if this was gonna fit her or not. We needed to have like a fitting. So that's what that is. So we need to try to Neaten, neaten this up a little bit and put in those buttons and stuff. So, yeah, that's what we'll be doing there. I don't think it's going to be too hard to neaten that up. It's really just going to take um, some nice hand sewing there. Um, it did fit her well, so that's cool. Oh, yeah, I remember we had to re redo that lining was shaped kind of weird there. All this is coming back to me now. All right, so what I'm going to do with this little bit of a thread that's left here is I'm going to touch just a little bit of cement to it. That way this old thread won't be pulled through. I can just snip it. And then when I go to sew in... I'm also cementing the knot on this bustle loop. But when I go to sew in these um, buttons, I'm going to go ahead and do them in the same row of stitches with, um, with catching these two. So I'm not just going to like start here. I'll start here and reinforce these and then go beyond as well. So that's kind of how I do that. Let me find her buttons. Here they are. Oh, and then I want to answer this question. I told you guys I was going to talk about this question somebody had for me. And I usually just kind of like generally answer the question. The question is when you take in or let out a dress and like let's say the mother of the bride is like how many sizes did you end up taking it in or letting it out I, I do get asked that question a lot but people will say so as still say how do you measure how many sizes you've taken them in and out do you just say every inch is a size what do you do so my clean cut quick answer is I just don't answer them in sizes. I just say, oh man, we had to take this in like four inches total or whatever. I usually say inches. And then I'm going to show you why I said that, why it does not work 
out the way they're asking us. This needs to be sewn over, doesn't it? I'm going to kind of do this a little bit out of order for how I would normally do because I've planned this live stream to happen pretty much at this cutting table. I'm going to hop over to the computer to show you why I answer the question the way I do. But other than that, I want it to happen like hand sewing on this cutting table. And that needs to be gone over with the machine. So I'll do that after the live stream is over. Typically, I would do that right now because the buttons are not in the way and they're getting ready to be in the way. But we just got to work with what we have. And I don't have a sewing machine right now in my face. All right, I do know the the mom was like really concerned about the transition like from here to here. You know how at the top of the zipper, right when the, the fold over part starts, where are my words today? I can't think today. I'm like, the flap, like why am I, uh. anyways, right where that starts, you know, if you don't have the elastic loop sewn to this, it kind of shows like the zipper head a little bit or wobbles a little bit to the left. And the mom, like, seriously does not want that. She was very adamant about that. So, a few of these things that I'm doing are going to look a little bit different. And this is why I'm doing it. So, I am putting this button quite a bit over to the right compared to these others. And that's going to compensate for how this is going to come open just a little bit where the zipper head is so that's what I'm doing there Ooh, not only am I sewing my button and getting to my next button but I get to sew this little corner of lace down that's nice don't you love that when you can do a couple things at once Lots of knots. <laughs> Doing a lot of knots because these are truly functional buttons. Remember what I was saying? There's nothing behind them. So they need to be good and tight and they need to be very even on her. Make sure you guys can still see. All right, so that's me going above and below the buttons that I was sewing. I went above and below by like two buttons. All right. Do you guys remember what I call this, what I'm doing right now? What do I call this? I knotted it off and I ran it through the fabric between the layers and I'm cutting it. What do I call that? Do you remember? I always like to do that does a couple good things. One thing is it gives you a longer tail so it's less likely to come unknotted. The other thing is what I call it. I call it hide the tail. I'm going to hide the tail. Oh, I think that's going to look nice. Hopefully you can picture that coming over to the side like that. I think that's going to do well. All right, so let's look at these sizing charts, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, why you can't really answer how many sizes did you take in or let out a dress. I'm going to look at your comments real quick. Let's see. Alabama. Oh, man, Susanna, isn't that the truth? Working day and night to make tons of custom sleeves for the fall rush. That is right. Um, Anna or Anna, never offer... Alter a wedding gown as a wedding gift. That's a hard life lesson to me. Not just you, honey. 
So many people have done that. That is a huge gift. That is a huge, huge ask. All right. Rachel, is it worth quitting your nine to five job and start doing this as a living? If you want, um, okay, I'm going to answer that in a shallow live stream public kind of way that could be applicable to everyone. But then if you want, um, you can also do a consultation with me one-on-one -on -one where we, you and I will both sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, and you can tell me the details of your finances and I can tell you the details of my finances. And it's kind of like a pinky promise that we are not going to disclose financial information about each other. So you and I can both be comfortable about that. And we can just really talk about your area, um, talk about the cost of living, talk about the competition that's there, um, talk about your potential market and how to find out what your potential market is. You would be surprised at how much we can cover in a phone call together to answer that question specifically for you. But let me say this. I show enough quit my nine to five job <laughs> to do this show enough. So, um, and when I talk about money on this channel, I'm only talking about money from my sewing business. Um, I'm not talking about anything to do with the actual sewing education side. Okay. That would be like YouTube and, you know, ads and all that, um, memberships. And I'm not including that kind of money in there. But it's unbelievable. Like for most places, there's a very high demand for what we do. And if you are highly skilled um, to sew or at least highly motivated to learn the craft and, um, and you love it and you treat people right and, you know, all that, um, you can definitely do very, 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 very well. Um trying to think what my business brings in. Of course, you get to control what your overhead is to some degree, right? You get to sign leases for more or less money. Um, so you do get to determine like what percentage of money you actually get to bring home. But as far as what you get to make, I'm trying to think. Hmm. My business brings in about five times what I made. Um, when it's just my sewing business, um, when I was teaching in public school, how's that? That gives you guys a pretty good idea, um, for your area, right? So I could take the amount of money I made and let's be conservative. Let's say I could, I could times it by four. Okay. Okay. And that's what my business, just the sewing, brings in. So you can do very, very well with it, and you can control how well you do with it. You get to set your prices, and you get to figure out your expenses and all that. So um, email me if you guys do want to do a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. I do them all the time. And um, some people, I was talking to somebody about this this week, sometimes it's not a good option for you financially to do like the virtual retreat or a, or a full week retreat. And, um, sometimes you don't even need that. Sometimes you're like well on your way and you've just got like a couple little sticking points that you need to go over. Um, I have had BST besties who have gone on to have wildly successful businesses with only a couple of consultation calls. They just kind of patch it all together. They'll get like, um, my contract pack, uh, for the legal stuff, my workbook that I have, Six Lies Told to the Modern Businesswoman, that really kind of gets your head, you know, in a good space for starting a business. Um, they do that, and then we just do a couple of consultation calls, and then it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So there is that. That is a great question, because I feel like, Rachel, you're not the only one wondering about that. Um, let's see. Oh, Irene, New Hampshire. My cell phone coverage is not the best today uh, due to storms. My video is not loading and I get bits of the audio. Well, that's sad. Well, um, there's always the replay, right, with a better signal. Irene, you can see she's got the little bestie icon beside her name. She's 
one of our members here. So past, present, now. I appreciate your tip videos. I've learned a lot of neat tricks. Awesome. Well, it's so good to have you. All right, so I'm going to slide over to the computer real quick and show you guys. Don't get dizzy. <laughs> show you guys. Um, this is just a website that I pulled up when someone was asking me that question of like, if you're asked um, how many sizes did you take in or let out a gown, uh, what do you say? And I said, well, my answer is I just talk about inches. I don't talk about sizes. And this is why. Um, all right, let me give credit here. I literally just Google searched um, wedding gown sizing here, measurements. Um, this is from a website called dearlylovedbridal.com. I'm not familiar with them, but they had a really comprehensive, helpful site here. So what is going on is you get to see, they have their bridal sizing guide. You get to see all these different brands, their sizing guides in one place. So these are, uh, some of these are big names, right? So let me show you what I was talking about. All right, so let's look at this size chart here. Okay, from size zero to two. Oh, you guys can't see that very well. Let me find a different one. Let's do this one. Blush. All right, so for size two, the bust would be a 32. All right. Size four, the bust would be 33. So we only went up um how do i get these to go down okay we only went up one inch but it's two numbers of the size so when somebody asks you how many sizes you take in or out number one you don't know if they're counting numbers like per unit like two three four five six or if they're keeping in mind that sizes typically run in even numbers and are they saying one size is from two to four or do they think that's two sizes so you get into that but look at the size jump okay from two to four we go up one inch from four to six it's the same six to eight it's the same eight to ten it's the same now look what happens we get to size 12 and we went up 1.5. All right, same thing, 14 is 1.5, 16 is 1.5. Um, same, now look, when we get to 20, we've gone up two, two inches. Two inches, two inches, three inches, three inches. Okay, so that is why I do not answer that question with sizes because every company has a different size chart anyways, right? Um, and then I don't know how good your memory is, <laughs> but I'm probably not going to remember, okay, this is such and such brand wedding gown. This is such and such original size. I went up this many inches and then know how they even think about sizing to begin with and then say, oh, we went up four sizes. It's just hard. So anyways, there's that. I thought you guys would like to see a little bit of behind the scenes about how um, wedding gowns are sized. A lot of times we don't see that, right? Um, and this is kind of nice that they give you hollow to waist and hollow to hem as well. So you get, this is kind of like going to take into account the torso length. And this is going to take into account the whole length of the body. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's get back to our project. Here we go. And if you guys have questions about that, just let me know. And I'm going to kind of pretty this up a little bit right here. Isn't that a mess? Shoo-wee. That's a mess. And I don't know if it's easier to get at it from the inside between the layers or if it's easier 
just to hand stitch it. Just tuck it in there and hand stitch it. A lot of times that's the easiest. I'm ready for fall, guys. I am so ready. I don't like hot weather. I like cool, crisp air. Nothing like it. Every fall we go to um, Pigeon Forge. And um, sometimes I even meet uh, BST Besties out there, which is super cool. Let me know if sometime, I think we're going in October. Let me know if you guys ever want to meet up somewhere. We do that. All right, so this is proving to be really clean to get to on the inside. This would be a good time to have a sewing machine. <laughs> I told you I'm trying to just do hand sewing today on the live stream. So here we are. I would definitely, if I was at the machine, I would just judge that up. Zhuzh, zhuzh. Basically, when you do a retreat with me, like my girl here is doing, it's almost like a live stream the whole time you're here. <laughs> I feel like she's probably, she's probably like, this is like when we sew. I just kind of explain what I'm doing. You know, but she gets to see fittings. That is one thing that's so valuable. And that will be in the virtual retreat, guys, by the way. I'm going to have um, live real brides um, that are going to be part of the filming process. They'll have consented to that. And you'll get to see how I actually run a fitting. Just making sure that I keep that little button loop on the outside there. I don't want to catch that inside and then not be able to use it. Just watching both sides as I sew. Get over here a little bit. And stitch this. This is the top, kind of where my loop is. That big, big loop. Gotta make it strong. Mom's worried about it. All right. Hopefully that's a little neater. If not, we'll snip it out and just do it again. That happens all the time to me. That was one of the, I don't know if you guys know that, but that's one of the cornerstone beliefs of this channel that I have. I did not want to have yet another little fake studio perfect kind of sewing channel. Aren't we all over that? I mean, who can say that they haven't sewn a sleeve in wrong two or three times in a row? <laughs> I think we've all done that. All right. And she still wants me to wait on this. I did ask the bride that. She said, wait. And we'll sew this down during her appointment. And this is just fine that this is tucking in. If it was sticking out, I would want to correct that. Because um, it'll, it'll cause a wobble above or below. But since we have this right below it, really holding things together. Come on. That's going to be just fine. It's going to pull this. That's going to get pulled right over. And it's going to be super tight and neat. Which is what the mom wants. I say that. I'm just joking. Like, she does want that, but I want it too. I'm, I'm into that too. I don't like it when these pop open at the top, which is what we were definitely struggling with on this dress. Um, I really like it when the zippers have the button looping. I don't like the faux buttons. When you transition from real ones to faux ones, it's just a mess sometimes. So... 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these loops to pull these buttons over. And then I'm going to make sure they function right. That's more like that. I'm going to make sure they function right. And then I'm probably going to um, butt some lace right up next to it. So they won't be noticeable because they're going to be pretty big. Let me see this. Yeah, I need to move that loop up. Remember, some of this is reused from last week when I was just doing it really for sizing. I wasn't doing it for neatness at all. I was not trying to get some big accurate thing going on. I wanted to know if I had taken it in the right amount. So, let's get us some loops in here. Let me read your comments real quick. Hmm. Are the one-on-ones applicable to Australians too? I find no matter what price I'm at, sorry, it keeps fading, Valerie. No, no matter what price I'm at, no one is ever happy. I feel like some people are pricing like it's a race to the bottom slash cheapest. Girl, aren't you right? Yes, I do Australia. Actually, I feel like literally half of my people that I work with very closely are on the other side of the world. So it's not just U.S. people that I work with. I work with um, Australians and New Zealanders and people in the U.K. and just all over. Um, so, yeah, we can do that. And we'll schedule it at a time that's um, convenient for both of us because we both want to have our wits about us, right? <laughs> I did an interview with somebody uh, what day was it? Monday uh, for this video. I'm still working on about the bridal fabrics uh, for Design Your Own Bridal Line. And I had to come out here and do the interview on Zoom at 3.30 in the morning. Woo! So that was a that was a deal. But we want it to be, we can make it hit better than that. Like I can come in a little bit early and you can stay up or uh, vice versa. Let's see. Um, okay, so Valerie, what I want to say is when you're asking about the price, no one is ever happy. If no one is ever happy, you might as well make money. So go ahead and price higher. I'm not racing anybody to the bottom. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Make it worth your time. Um, you can watch my um, money affirmations videos. They really seem to help. Uh, so us out. We all kind of have a problem with that, right? Not not quite pricing good enough when we start out. Um, can you guys, if you haven't yet, can you hit the thumbs up button, please, real quick on this? Give it a like so that YouTube will remember to keep pushing it out to people because we have about 15 minutes left. Let's get those likes up. Um, all right. So past, present, now. If you could give younger you one tip for starting this business, what would it be? Hmm. Don't be afraid. Just go ahead and do it. That would be my tip. Um, I was so scared. I started my, my business with a great deal of trepidation. And um, I mean, I understand there's those early years when it takes like skill building and, and you don't want to like dive in financially and get in over your head. You still want it to grow organically. Um, I don't regret that, but I guess like where I was at emotionally, um, it was not, it just wasn't true. So I had a lot of fear and trepidation and not sure if I should do it. And so, yeah, that would be my tip to my younger me would be just do it. It's going to be fine. All right, I've been teaching how to use sewing machines for eight plus years. While enjoyable, I'm wanting to branch out and start my own business. Rock on, past, present, now. There's no reason why you can't, right? No reason why you can't. All right, let's get this lined up here. I'm going to start right here. Remember, this is going to be a little bit, just a little bit gnarly looking. But I'm going to put lace over it when I'm done. I'm going to put lace right beside it when I'm done. All right, so I'm going to lock that knot here. 
And here we go. I'm going to do chain tacks to make the loops. Actually, the tripod is still working really good. Not having the chest mount is not bothering me today. So that's cool. I want to make sure she can get this around the button easily. All right, so there's loop number one. And I love that it is going through here. Always, when you do a loop like this that you're going to use and it needs to have any kind of strength, come back through and put your needle back through this so you don't just have it hanging on by the thread. This is upholstery thread and it's not under a lot of pressure, but still. There's that. Let's do it again. Oh no, I'm playing chicken with my thread. I'm kind of running low. Well, if I have to snip it, I have plenty of knots in my thread. <laughs> Great day. I'm definitely playing chicken. Look at that. I can barely go through. I know you guys have done that a few times. And hopefully I didn't make that too small. Going through like this. Man, the girl that is here for a retreat, she's quiet, isn't she? Why is a mouse? You wouldn't even know she was back there. She's watching us. <laughs> she smiled. You can't hear her smile, but she smiled. All right. Hide the tail. Whew, ready to cut this AC on. I've got it off because I don't want it to mess with the audio. I know it's tricky enough. We are still sweltering here. All right, now I gotta make the new loop that's gonna line up with the hook here. Let's see. Any other questions? Thank you guys. You gave me five more likes after I asked for that. That was sweet of you. It only takes a second. Have you noticed it does like this little sparkly firework thing when you do a like? They give you a little dopamine hit. <laughs> That's super nice of them. All right. So this is going to be back here. And I'm going to connect this to the lining too. I'm not just going to have it connecting to the netting. There we go. So that it's nice and strong and then we're also gonna have this lace too don't forget that we will be sewing that lace on so this is gonna be the loop that that big hook attaches to so this one doesn't have to be as big as the other ones the other ones were kind of like homemade button loops that were not stretchy it's just one of the fun things about bridal sewing or sewing in general is how creative we get to be with our problem solving. I feel like I don't put two dresses together the same way, you know. Um, I kind of get to know during the fitting process what kind of issues each dress has that need to be corrected and I try to do that. I'm going to put the knot on the outside since we're going to have this extra piece of lace covering it when we're done. So that's fun. It's always good to have extra lace to cover your stuff. Huh? You get to make it good and strong then because nobody's going to see it. Hide the tail. Yay! So the back is getting 
pretty close to being closed up. Let's see how I did on that game of chicken. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we can do it. Tuck that in there. That one went across easily. Oh, it feels like it's going to work. Yes, it works. All right, let's get this guy tucked way back in here. She has, as you can tell by the shape of this, the small of her back really goes in. So we had to bring all this in to tuck in like that. That's why it's not as flat as what you normally see. But it looks amazing on her. The last time we saw it on her, we, it was just really a basic fit check to see if we had taken it in the right way for her. And it was lovely. You guys, uh, put, put questions in there. I'm here. Put questions in there because after I look at this, I'm going to look back at the comments and see what your questions are. Comments or questions, even if you just need a shoulder to cry on. And you guys are also welcome to talk amongst yourselves in the chat, too, when we do the live streams. Nice. All right, so. I'm trying to see if that's going to lay right. That's good. I'm almost thinking I could pull this over a little bit, and these can actually come over this way a little bit. Yeah, definitely going to pull that over. That works. Yay. All right. Let's see. Ooh, Valerie. <coughs> you had to roll him a silk satin circle curved wrap skirt. Gross. Gross. Let's see. And was about to cry in frustration. I bet you were. All right, what's this question here? How do you normally address a deep sway back on a bride? Yay, I get to sketch that. I'm going to sketch that for you. Let me go get a piece of paper. All right, so, well, obviously that's kind of what we're doing here. There's a couple different ways that I do it. And this girl, we were taking it up. Um, if you remember, this girl, her dress was completely cut in two, and we shortened the waist, um, and we brought it in um, at the sides and the zipper. So we already had a few places to work with on her. But... You know, certainly if they have like a little bit of a, of a wobble, pinchy area along the zipper that makes it clear that like it was kind of set wrong, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with that. If you're grabbing it and you can kind of move it real easy and it has this, this roll kind of pucker there. Um, you can sometimes pinch it from the side and pull it and see how much of that gets corrected at the side seams. But if it's really bad, you, you have to work at the zipper. So sometimes I'll do that. And in that case, um, I'm just going to kind of follow the wrinkles. I would move this in more like this, you know, so, um, in case you can't see that. We're talking, bring it in, kind of like that, the same bit each, each side. Um, but a lot of times that's not really the issue. You can kind of pull it at the lower back because she really sways in. Um, 
but it's not necessarily puckering there. So in that case, a lot of times I just add a couple of darts. So let's say, let's say we've got this shape. Okay, and we can kind of get our hand in there and, and do this number, but yet it's tight enough here. We don't want to start getting like, you know, some pulling or, you know, anything like that going on. We don't want that. So I literally just bring it in like this. Kind of like a triangle shaped dart and then this dart is gonna taper out kind of like at a curve okay so darts there's there's really kind of an art to doing darts um you can do darts like this you know like let's say this is like the arm's eye or something, right? The, the dress. You can do a dart like that and just a pie shape. And then when you're done, you're going to end up with um, a little bit of a pucker and a, almost like a bullet bra look. That's not good. So what I do in that case is I'm going to come in more like this. And I'm exaggerating the size of the dart, but it's gonna it's gonna curve with the body, and it's gonna have a slow taper. I could really do a whole video about this. This is a game changer for how good your alterations look. So here, the back is typically just on such a straight, you know straight angle you could like lay a ruler up against it and you know whichever way it goes it's going to stay pl pretty flush but when you're looking at the skirt for somebody who has their back swaying in and let's just draw some little nudie pictures here for a minute a lot of times they'll have the dimples here you know their back really comes in and they almost have these dimples and sometimes their rear is built up quite well. Just depends on the body type. When you get into that, this is fine up here because look at how less complex. But you get down here where you're really kind of coming in and then going right back out and and you've got your curves working this way, this way. Um, that's when I'm going to go ahead and depending on her body, the dart is going to kind of taper off like that or come in like that, just depending on her body. Um, and you can kind of pin it a little bit just to get an idea of, of what's looking better. So, um, that's what I would do most of the time when dealing with a little bit of a sway back, but I certainly correct it. They, if you look at a bride in the mirror who has that, you know, from her side scenes, are you in this frame here? Let's see. So if you look at her from the side, it's just such a different look for her body type. If And you'll find, too, a lot of these girls have a, um, not in this case of this dress, but a lot of times they'll have a longer waist, and that's kind of part of what's going on back there. But they just look so much better if you go ahead and capture that. Like, it makes their bum look better. Look how much better that looks. If you can go ahead and capture that curve in. 
it really slims them out. So do not neglect that. That, uh, that alteration can really elevate the look of your, the fit of your gowns. So there's that. Anybody just hopping on right now is going to be like, what in the world are they talking about? <laughs> well, that's a wrap, guys. It's about three. Let me just check on here and see if there's anything else to respond to. Um, do you have any other questions? Angie Gregory, we go to Pigeon Forge in the fall, too. It's my rest place. Yes, girl. Yes, girl. <laughs> We get a cabin, and I sit out in the cool, crisp, you know, drink my coffee in the mornings, overlooking the Smoky Mountains, like, ah, oh, yes, there's no brides hunting me down up there, maybe some bears, but, so you're going at the end of October. We'll have to talk about it and see. I need to look. I'm not sure when we're going. I have it marked off, but yeah, if we're there at the same time, we could meet up. I love doing that. All right, guys, you have a fabulous week. Don't forget, I am still working on that video. I, I wanted to get it out like two weeks ago, but the Bridal Fabrics video is coming up. I'm super stoked about that, so be on the lookout for that and my shorts that I post all the time, too. Take care, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.